Today in Backyard Mechanics, we're going to see what's inside a rotary side plate. Alright, so here we have it. This is an end plate designated back. As you can see here, re-stationary gear and bolt provisions for the housing of the gearbox to bolt up. Uh, what you have here is your intake port. So air and fuel come in here. They come out here, introduced into the uh, rotor housing. Rotor sweeps around, compresses it to the point here where ignition occurs and then exhaust cycle and then out the other end of the rotor housing or in the case of Renaissance engine, out the side port that is also in the iron. Uh, this is a, obviously an early port plate, um, so early 12A plate I believe. And it's just basically one of our early machining test plates. I think uh, I think we used this as to play a joke on someone once when we were porting their plates and pretended that we put a big die grinder mark in it and said, oops, that was funny for us. Not so much funny for the customer, but I laughed. That's all that matters. Uh, here you've got um, water outlet for heater hose, uh, oil regulator. So that regulates the pressure of the entire oiling system. So oil in the oiling system um, goes out the front plate, comes out, uh, it goes into the oil cooler, comes out the oil cooler, comes all the way back in through here to the filter, and then from the filter it goes into the stationary gear bearings, uh, and also it comes down here to the regulator to regulate the pressure in the system. So early engines have uh, uh, oil pressure around tra traditionally somewhere around in the um, mid 60s or 70s thereabouts, and later model engines like the ones in the FD uh, have it up around 90 plus. So uh, oil regulator is a place where you can modify to um, change your oil pressure in the system depending on things like uh, if they're race engines or bearing clearance and stuff like that. So these are where the factory dowels go. This one up here, it's common to crack when you see detonation uh, in an engine. So if you've got a rotary engine um, and you've seen an oil leak from here, um, more than likely it may have cracked through detonation and that that rear plate now needs to be replaced so you can't just defcon up across that crack there because uh, that's where the dowel locates and, and, and has the um, torsional rigidity in the engine so can't just uh, yeah fill that in and hope for the best must replace the iron so uh, you can see here even I've done some tiny little bit of uh, machining there is probably just to test some drill bits and that and sharpness and that's often one of the methods that you can do to increase the strength on these things so these would have been drilled out and then you can fit extra uh, extra dowels in the system which are these dowels I've got just over here so that dowel normally sits up there but you can put extra ones in here or you would have seen things like bolts through bolts and stuff like that as well so um, anyway enough of that let's uh, machine off a big chunk of this and see what's hiding behind this iron face. All right, to do this, we've just got a cutter head. I think these are actually a bit blunt, but I can't be bothered sharpening them right now, so it'll do the job. Uh, you know, I'll have to go mill, all set up, ready to go. It's all locked in place. Got a bit of WD-40 here, just in case it gets a bit hot, so the cutter doesn't get blunt. Then what we'll do is we'll just sweep back and forward, back and forward, until, um, until we get to the depth that we want, so we can see what's going on under this face here. All right, let's get started. All right, so just now you can start seeing the face starting to really come away there. So we probably haven't got too much more to go. So a couple more skims over and uh, we should be good to have a better look at this. So here we have it, we're all done with the machining. So let's take a bit of a closer look at uh, what's hiding underneath the surface. So we'll start off from this side. So of course, as before, we've got our intake port that comes in here. And uh, what's good to notice here is that the intake port, you have very limited casting around here before you hit this area. So what this is, is water. This is a water jacket. So uh, water is in here cooling this, the entire engine. So if you are too aggressive with your porting here, um, you can see how easy it is to actually go through to the water jacket. And if you go through to the water jacket, what you're gonna have to do is take this and throw it in the bin, because it'll be done. I'm sure there's plenty of people who have done that before. 
A lot of people who build race engines will actually do exactly what I've done here to understand just the thickness around here to see how far and how aggressive you can get with the port. So there's a lot of classes uh, around the world that have uh, restricted uh, intake porting setups. So you can't, you might not be able to do, uh, say, a bridge port or other porting in that. You may be restricted to um, just an extend port. So knowing how far you can go with that um, can mean the difference between you know another 10 horsepower or so when you're in a restricted class that can mean a lot so that's probably one of the biggest ones there to take out of it is just how little meat there is around the actual factory port there so this is a bit of a smaller one because it's only i think it's 12 inch and so but then you'll see here that how thick the material is around the bearing support so at the back here this is where the rear stationary gear bolts on and you can see just how thick the cast iron material is there so that's ultra ultra thick so it's got a lot of, lot of strength because it has to hold that gear in place where the engines all that horsepower turning around has to hold that gear in place so uh, and then up here you'll see more of the water jackets so you can see how much water cooling and all the, the, the little fins there to direct all the water in the right place and the right passages uh, and that runs all the way through this face here and next we're up here we've got the through bolts you'll see that they they're all very thick around there so it's got a lot of um, stability and then the dowel. So again, like we were saying before, this holds um, that sort of torsional rigidity of the engine together. So there has to be a fair bit of meat here to, to enable it to, to take those uh, twisting forces essentially. So that is pretty much it. That's a look inside a rotary engine iron. All right, so that's it for this episode. We got to see inside a rotary engine iron, a REN plate. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did making it. Uh, if you want to see inside or a bit more technical information or anything else, leave comments below and we'll um, answer them and see if we can get to them as soon as we can. Until next time, see you later.